Is Great Uncle Walt frozen underneath the Pirates of the Caribbean? The frozen body of Walt Disney will finally be thawed in December. No, not frozen. Was at the funeral, remember it well. <laughs> no. With the hope of bringing him back to life. Welcome to BJ Investigates, a show I just created and might never do again. In today's episode, we're gonna be investigating an urban legend that rears its head in viral TikToks every few years. Walt Disney's frozen head. We're gonna look into some of the more far-fetched theories and see if we can get to the bottom of why people can't seem to let this rumor go. Gonna do a little frozen head hunt? A little frozen head finding. <laughs> I told you guys, I looked it up and I found three different articles where the vice president of the studio said that story about Charles Dingo's frozen head isn't true. <laughs> of course they say that. They wanna keep it a secret. Cause how would it look if people found out that a kid's network has their leader's head stuck in a freezer? So the other day, I was talking to Jake about the California Transhumanist Party because Lima Yavrimovich was featured as a member on their leadership page for literally years up until basically the other day. Coming as a surprise to absolutely nobody, that leadership team whatever page tab is all of a sudden missing out of nowhere and they haven't replaced it with anything. But I was talking to Jake about this one guy, Dr. Greg Fahey. And he is a leading expert in the field of human cryogenics, AKA freezing human parts to preserve them for later use. That's about the time when Jake reminded me of an age old urban legend that I had vaguely forgotten about. And that's Walt Disney's frozen head. So the legend goes that Walt Disney had his body or maybe just his head cryogenically frozen after his death in hopes that one day modern medical science might be able to bring him back to life. I don't know. The story took so many twists and turns whenever I was investigating it. In any event, I will attempt to do the best that I can to present the findings that I have made and that's all I can really do. So let's get into it. And it was Nelson who told the Los Angeles Times in 1972 that Walt really wanted to be frozen, but that the pair of them couldn't quite sort out the paperwork in time. So before we get into the more far-fetched theories here, and you know, all this is just for entertainment purposes only, I'm gonna make a lot of disclaimers in this video, just letting y'all know. Let's start with the traditionally mainstream agreed upon facts. First, it's undisputed, Walt Disney was reported to have passed away in 1966. In 1972, a man named Bob Nelson, the president of the now defunct Cryonics Society of California told the LA Times that he had spoken to Walt Disney before he died. And Walt expressed interest in having his body frozen after he passed away. According to Bob, that never happened because they were not able to get the paperwork done in time or something. So according to this guy, Bob, in the paper, Disney was cremated and he did not get any body parts frozen. Disappointingly though, there is zero evidence that Walt Disney ever wanted to put himself in the deep freeze. Other people definitely have frozen their heads. As recently as October of last year, the Smithsonian Magazine, the publication that they do, they published an article about a cryogenics facility in Scottsdale, Arizona, that has at least 200 human heads in its possession, frozen, not really sure what to do with them or something. Now, this particular facility is run by a company called Alcor or Alcor Life Extension Foundation. Just remember that for a point coming up in the future, but before we get into them, I want to get to the final, like, agreed upon fact. It's traditionally mainstream. Everybody agrees with this. It does seem possible to just cryogenically freeze the head, considering the 200 heads that are frozen. And in those cases, they would just freeze the head and the rest of the body would be cremated. The cremated remains would be sent back to the family members. So it is possible to just freeze some body parts after somebody dies. There is a 2019 Vice article that outlines a lawsuit where a guy sues this exact cryogenics facility for decapitating his father posthumously and sending the rest of the father back to the family cremated and keeping the head frozen. But I don't, it's like I told y'all, it's about to get so weird. This is like agreed upon in the mainstream news. So we're, we're about to dive in. So first I wanna dip our toe into the frozen movie conspiracy theory. <laughs> Now, over the course of my research for this video, I came across an urban legend, AKA conspiracy theory, that for some reason, the powers that be at Disney do not want the general public to believe that Disney's head is frozen. Now, if that is true, which I don't even know if that is true, but if it is true, I could think of a lot of valid reasons for them not to want the general public to think that, 
And the primary reason being, it's not true, right? So maybe it's just not true. Maybe this whole thing's a big rumor, theory, whatever you want to call it. And if that's the case, then yeah, why would the Disney company want people spreading this rumor if it's not true? So some reports do claim, like I already mentioned, that Disney was cremated and he was not frozen. And so, you know, maybe it's just not true. But according to some theorists, Disney TM is allegedly misleading the public on purpose and the reasons are very nefarious. Again, this is just according to them, not me. So let's look at that theory. We're gonna call this one the Frozen Movie Theory. According to the proponents of the Frozen Movie Theory, and that's just what I'm gonna call it. I don't think this is the actual name for it. Disney TM named that one movie about Elsa Frozen in order to confuse search engines. This theory it depends on the notion that Disney has some reason or desire to hide the research or the information about Disney, Walt Disney freezing his head, which I can't think of any reason why they would want to hide it. If someone were to, for example, type in, you know, Disney Frozen head, they may get pages upon pages upon pages of search results about that movie, the blockbuster hit from 2014. Open door. During my research though, I found another, I'll call it a competing theory that I think y'all might find a little bit interesting. None of this is facts, just reporting on what I found. This is for fun and entertainment purposes only. So this alternative to the frozen movie theory involves an elusive organization that builds underground bunkers. So let's get into it. Here's the alternative frozen movie theory. I wanna say that we're gonna to have to save the discussion on all the details and definitions of exactly what transhumanism is as a philosophy, a movement, a political party for another video. For now, suffice it to say that in general, transhumanists strive to modify humanity such that humans can live longer, perform better in various ways, and maybe also like be half robot or something, I don't know. For the purposes of this video, just know that transhumanists put a lot of focus on making humans live longer. It's one of their big goals. A big focus of the transhumanists is to extend the life of humans. Now, the founder and current chairman of the California Transhumanist Party to this day, his name is Dr. Newton Lee. Now, Dr. Newton Lee, we got a whole video coming out on this guy because woo, it gets weird. What I only wanna focus on is how he has a few connections to the Disney company. And it could be a total coincidence that this man has Disney connections and there's other Disney and the Frozen and this and that. But it just felt a little too on the nose that this guy had direct working experience with Disney. So I would be remiss not to mention it, at least briefly in this video. So Newton Lee, again, the founder and the chairman of the California Transhumanist Party does have ties to Disney. For four years in the early 90s, Newton worked as senior software engineer for a company called Media Station Incorporated. Now, Media Station Incorporated does seem to be like some kind of third party contractor for video game development or something like that. Anyway, Newton's LinkedIn does show that he worked on various video games back at that time, many of which were award winning children titles for Disney. Now, after that, Newton actually worked for the Walt Disney Company itself as senior staff engineer and senior producer, where he founded the Disney Online Technology Forums. And he did all kinds of other stuff or whatever, but he worked there for 10 years for the Walt Disney Company. Here's some other pics of Newton with his Disney serve or whatever. Anyway, that's where we meet one of the stars of today's video, Dr. Greg Fahey. Before this web page on the California transhumanist leadership just miraculously, mysteriously disappeared all of a sudden one day, this guy Greg was listed as the director of biomedicine for the California transhumanist party. Now, according to this bio, as you can see, he has a PhD in pharmacology. And from 1977 through 1995, he did cryogenic preservation on kidneys for the American Red Cross. So this is like almost 20 years from 77 to 95. He worked at other prestigious institutions, including the Naval Medical Research Institute as the chief scientist. As of May, 2018, he was apparently doing some age reversal experiment at Stanford University and focuses his work on improving Improving methods of organ banking, among other things. So after I saw this bio, I wanted to look into Greg further to see if I could get any insight into this whole
whole Disney head thing. Now, Greg is all over the internet, and it took me about exactly approximately 10 seconds to find his Wikipedia. As of the time of researching this video, which was around July 3rd, 2023, the Wikipedia page showed that Greg was the president of the Society for Cryobiology. Now, that Wikipedia page goes on to refer to Greg Fahey as the world's foremost expert in organ cryopreservation by vitrification. Apparently, Greg was the first person to successfully cryopreserve a rabbit kidney and, and successfully replant it into another rabbit or something after they rewarmed it, thought it out. So then of course I look beyond the Wikipedia page. I get to looking into more places on the internet for information about Greg Fahey. And I do want to give a special thanks on this portion to Silly Pony, who is the person who did actually make this finding originally and bring it to my attention. So you know who you are, thank you. So look, Greg Fahey is also listed as an advisory board member of an organization called the Lifeboat Foundation. The Lifeboat Foundation is a non-profit, non-governmental organization dedicated to encouraging scientific advancements while helping humanity survive existential risks and possible misuse of increasingly powerful technologies, including genetic engineering, nanotechnology, and robotics AI. As we move towards the singularity, Lifeboat Foundation is pursuing a variety of options, including helping to accelerate the development of technologies to defend humanity, such as new methods to combat viruses, effective nanotechnological defensive strategies, and even self-sustaining space colonies in case the other defensive strategies fail. So according to this bio, Greg's efforts, quote, Greg's efforts have recently raised the question of whether human suspended animation might be an attainable goal that might allow the human species to survive in deep time as a result of enabling migration from the earth to other habitats in the cosmos. So in other words, freezing living human beings, zooming them across the universe to wake them up an unimaginably later time, and then they could, I guess, pop back into, I don't really know, I don't really know. So. This part of his bio kind of leads me to believe, maybe speculate, that his research might be based on something a little bigger than just freezing organs for retransplanting them in other people or whatever. Now, this so-called Lifeboat Foundation is no stranger to controversy. Still, to this day, as of July 3rd, 2023, the site has another advisory board member that you might actually recognize. Now, it's no secret that this financier had fantasies of having his head and certain other body parts frozen so that he could, this is the quote, seed the population with his DNA. Dude was a total weirdo. But I gotta admit, this one degree of separation between Jeffy and Lima did get me a little bit on edge. Anyway, the more I looked into this Lifeboat Foundation, the weirder and wilder things kept getting. Like the nonprofit Lifeboat Foundation owns lifeboat.com and describes itself as a nonprofit, non governmental organization dedicated to encouraging scientific advancements while helping humanity survive existential risks and possible misuse of increasingly powerful technologies, including genetic engineering, nanotechnology, and robotics slash AI. As we move toward the Singularity, with a capital S. What I can't help but notice is how this kind of sounds like it fits exactly in with the same goals of transhumanism, of like extending human life. And like in and of itself, that's fine. It's, it's, there's nothing wrong with it if that's what you're into and that's what you wanna do. I, I, I don't know, maybe there should be some type of governing body over it or something, but right now there doesn't seem to be. So anyway, long story short, Lifeboat Foundation also develops and builds underground bunkers through a program called Life Shield Bunkers. And here is a diagram that I pulled from their website just on the bunkers, I could make many videos, but I will not do that. What I will say is, it says, the Life Shield Bunkers program is a complement to the Space Habitats program. It's a fallback position in case programs like Lifeboat's BioShield and NanoShield fail globally or locally. But the point is, the Lifeboat Foundation looks like some doomsday preppers. But to be honest, I can't even really blame them. I kind of wish that I had a bunker to go hide in, in case shit goes south. But alas, I guess I'm going down in flames with the rest of the open air prisoners. 
we're all in it together. Weirdly though, the Lifeboat Foundation makes reference to quote, a large bunker would be a place where babies are born and children play and go to school. Now, Alcor might sound familiar because that's the same exact company we just talked about a few minutes ago with the 200 frozen heads over there in Scottsdale or whatever. Well, it probably won't come as a huge surprise to you that Mr. Leading Expert in the field of cryonics has connections to that company too. And as recently as November of last year in 2022, so like eight months ago, Greg was featured in a bulletin that Alcor published to its official website. Going back again, in 2012, Fahey was featured in an Alcor's cryonics publication about a symposium on cryonics and brain-threatening disorders. This project includes freezing whole mammals. As recently as this year, so February, just a few months ago, Greg Fahey was a featured speaker at Alcor's 50th anniversary symposium conference thing. There's like a video of it even. That was literally this year. So he definitely seems to have ties to Alcor. And remember, He's on the leadership page of the California Transhumanist Party with Lima, and he's listed as the director of biomedicine or whatever. Okay, so anyway, back to this alternative Frozen movie theory now that you have the context. So in like 2009, these guys, Larry Johnson and Scott Baldiga, tried to blow the whistle on this whole cryonics world, and in particular, Alcor. One or maybe both of these guys worked for Alcor and started noticing some very alarming patterns. Arizona-based Alcor is the worldwide leader in cryonics. Its lab is said to house corpses, including the remains of baseball great Ted Williams. Williams swings, and there's a long... Frozen to minus 321 degrees, all at a cost of about $120,000 each. Larry Johnson, a former chief operating officer at Alcor, says in a new book that Williams' corpse was mistakenly decapitated and gruesomely mistreated. Through internal documents, photos, and secretly recorded conversations obtained by Johnson, he also alleges the company participated in the premature deaths of two Alcor clients who were close to dying. So what, what, what did he do? Did he just... He killed her. Alcor denies any wrongdoing and released a statement about the claims made in Johnson's book. In part, it says, Alcor is a nonprofit organization, a pioneer in the field of cryonics, and categorically denies the false allegations contained in Mr. Johnson's book. Typically what would happen is they would have a member uh, who's a member of Alcor uh, would, uh, would pass away, mm -hmm. would die. Uh, they would bring that individual to the facility and begin the cool down process. Right. Uh, it, depending on what option you would take depends on what they do to you. If you take the whole body option, they freeze your whole body. If you want just the head only option, they just freeze the head. According to a book that they came together to write with each other, once they started asking questions, they almost immediately began receiving, you know what, threats. So they wrote this huge expose about what they claim to have experienced firsthand at Alcor. And the subtitle of the book is My Journey into the World of Cryonics, Deception, and Death. You allege in the book there were people who were prematurely passed Absolutely. On with the aid of Alcor employees. Absolutely. I have knowledge of two. I have solid evidence of one in the form of uh, tape recordings. I, right. I wired myself to, to get that on tape that they were actually right. euthanized. So you went to the cops and what did the cops say? I went to the cops. I went. This actually occurred. This particular death occurred in L.A. Right. So I went to LAPD Homicide Division. Turned the tapes over to uh, the homicide detectives. Right. They thought this is great. This is a smoking gun. We're going to deal with this. A few days pass. I call them. They said, you know, this is 11 years old. We don't have the resources to deal with this. We're worried about the homicides that happened last night. Now, according to the reports about the book that I read online, this book seems to have implicated the Lifeboat Foundation and their little underground bunker project as well. But I can't say for sure. I have not read the book. I did order it, but it's taken forever to come to my house. So I have not had a chance to read the book. But that's what I just read from reports online. That could not be true. I don't know. In any event, it, it definitely does talk about Alcor, that facility with the 200 heads in Scottsdale. And this book was supposed to blow the lid off the whole cryo world and reveal what the whistleblower authors alleged was a widespread criminal activity, including... Right. The other thing you say, you've, you believe you, you've been living in fear. Fear of what? Uh, fear of my life. They're, they're fanatics. Uh, they've given me death threats. They've followed me from state to state leaving notes on my vehicles, basically saying, uh, you know, we're going to do away with you. The full name title of that book? Frozen, My Journey into the World of Cryonics, Deception, and Death. 
So I have no idea if this theory is true. It's just something I came across when searching, but the alternative Frozen movie theory goes that Elsa Disney movie wasn't named Frozen so that they could stop people searching about Walt Disney freezing his head. It was called Frozen to obscure search results of this book that has to do with cryonics. Cause that Frozen book was written in 2009 and Frozen the movie didn't come out till 2014. I don't know if this is true, y'all. And to be honest, I don't actually really believe it. If, if you really wanna know my opinion, I don't believe it. I don't think this is wh what's happening, but it's just a fun, entertaining theory I saw on the internet. Which brings us to our final fun, entertaining theory for your consideration. And that one has to do with where is Walt Disney's head if it is frozen? Let's say Walt Disney's head is frozen. Where is it? So now that we've gone over what could have happened to Disney's head and theories around how it could have just been a cover up or whatever, let's get into the actual Disney on ice. So where does the Disney Corporation or Walt's estate keep that cryogenic freezer that allegedly housed their former leader's frozen head? Well, there have been many, many rumors about his head's final resting place, all because of a huge article written in the now defunct tabloid, The National Spotlight. In this article, a reporter alleges that he had snuck into St. Joseph's Hospital in Burbank, directly across the street from the Disney Studios and where he was treated during his final illness. So it was where Disney was during the final days of his illness. As the story went, the reporter disguised himself as an orderly, broke into a storage room, and saw the deceased Disney suspended in a cryogenic metal cylinder. But that's not where the news stopped. Over the course of the coverage of Walt Disney's death, several publications would start the rumor that his head was to be thawed out in the near future, but nothing quite stuck like the rumor that his head was being kept underneath the famed Pirates of the Caribbean attraction in Anaheim, California. Because Walt Disney wanted to preserve the magic of Disneyland, he created an underground tunnel system for cast mates or cast members that would also be used by the crew and custodians of Disneyland to transport themselves from place to place without the general public seeing any of the behind the scenes magic. Well, these tunnels have set up for quite a few urban legends, some of which came out to be completely false, but others that turned out to be entirely true, like the basketball court inside of the Matterhorn mountain ride or the exclusive Club 33, only accessible by secret entrance. And this is a place where Disney's elite can party in private or something. I wouldn't know, I wouldn't know. It's very expensive. You gotta pay $14,000 a month or something. How much is it? I don't know, it's very expensive. But both of those, the Club 33 and the Matterhorn basketball court turned out to be true. However, the story of Disney's head being frozen would also take place inside these complex catacombs that Walt Disney had built to keep the magic. Now, this all sounds outrageous, to me, and it is. But what if I told you that there is actually some verifiable evidence to there being not one, but multiple human heads that have been preserved at the location of the Pirates of the Caribbean ride in Anaheim, California for like decades? Well, in the 60s, when the ride was being conceptualized, Walt Disney knew he wanted the ride to be hyper-realistic, but the effects for the time weren't up to his standard and they looked too fake. Thus, Walt Disney opted for the most chilling option imaginable real human remains. Now, I didn't know this, Jake actually told me this, but the Pirates of the Caribbean ride has been around Disney for like 60 years or something, way before there was ever a movie about the Pirates of the Caribbean. It was a ride way before it was a movie. So to this very day in 2023, it seems like there's actually still some human remains subtly featured in the Pirates of the Caribbean ride, but it used to be much less subtle. See, back in the 60s, UCLA Medical Center donated human remains for whatever reason to the Walt Disney Company to install in this new attraction that would become the Pirates of the Caribbean ride. According to Disney producer Jason Searle's book, Pirates of the Caribbean, From the Magic Kingdom to the Movies, he says that the reason the skeletons used to look so incredibly real on the Pirates of the Caribbean ride is because they were real human skulls. But over time, maintenance, upkeeps, and decay would, would lead them to need to be replaced, and by this time, they would opt for fake bones created by Imagineers. Reportedly, each time a skeleton would be retired from Pirates of the Caribbean ride, they would hold a burial ritual? <laughs> what? 
Okay, this is crazy. I don't know if this is real. I'm just telling y'all what this says, okay? I'm just telling y'all what it says. I wasn't at any of the rituals. I was not at any of the head burials, so I cannot confirm or deny that this is real or it happened. Anyway, there's still one remaining human skull as of 2023, and it is in the captain's quarters treasure room. In the room, you see the captain examining his map, but behind him, on his headboard, you see a much larger and darker skull. And this is reportedly the only remaining human skull at the Pirates of the Caribbean attraction. But I, I mean, I don't even know if that part's true. Just, I don't know. I don't know if any of this is true. I'm just telling y'all what they put out here for us to read. I really don't know. So is there really a frozen head and a little cryogenic tank underneath the Pirates of the Caribbean ride? I don't know. In 1972, just a few years after Walt Disney died, his daughter did come out and make a statement in response to all this frozen head rumor. She's quoted as saying, there's absolutely no truth that my father, Walt Disney, wished to be frozen. I doubt that my father had ever even heard of cryonics. But her father was the creator of Epcot. He was obsessed with the idea of the future and what could be done to innovate. That never stopped with theme parks and animation. Walt was fascinated by what the future held, a future that he knew he would never get to see, only dream of. But one can't shake the feeling of the final video of Walt Disney not being a goodbye. Good evening, friends. I'm sorry to have to welcome you to this invitational showing of Follow Me Boys in this way. I'd give anything to be there with you. But this seems to be one of those times I'm tied down here at the studio night and day. So thanks for coming. And again, I'm sorry I can't be there with you personally for this occasion. But here now is Follow Me Boy. We're gonna call it a day on this one for now and invite you to just go off and do your own research. Don't take anything that I say as facts. In the meantime, facts ain't defamation. Love you, Mina. Okay, bye.